Not long ago, NASA announced that it had tasked SpaceX with creating a specialized vehicle to guide the International Space Station into its spectacular retirement. And keeping that in mind, they need to build a type of vehicle that meets the required technical standards. It's a huge task, no doubt, but lo and behold, they finally came up with a solution. And today, we are provided with insights about the vehicle. They say that the vehicle is going to be a monster. Just imagine a behemoth floating through space, gracefully completing its final mission before plunging into the Earth's atmosphere for a grand finale. This isn't a sci-fi movie plot, it's the reality awaiting the International Space Station. This is the Space Technician signing on, and let's dive into the details of this ambitious plan. The International Space Station has been a symbol of international collaboration in space for over two decades. Managed by NASA, the European Space Agency, the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, the Canadian Space Agency, and Roscosmos, it has facilitated groundbreaking scientific research and technological advancements. However, as it approaches the end of its operational life around 2030, the focus shifts to safely deorbiting this massive structure. In June 2024, NASA awarded SpaceX a contract worth $843 million to develop and deliver the U.S. deorbit vehicle. The spacecraft will ensure the International Space Station can safely and precisely re-enter Earth's atmosphere, breaking up over a remote area of the Pacific Ocean. Cargo Dragon has been performing uncrewed International Space Station resupply trips since 2012, while Crew Dragon has been transporting astronauts into space since 2020. It's no surprise that SpaceX is developing a new vehicle based on those. SpaceX's U.S. deorbit vehicle will be an enhanced version of their Dragon capsule, which has already proved its mettle in transporting cargo and astronauts to and from the International Space Station. This new iteration, often referred to as Dragon on steroids, will be equipped with additional thrusters and reinforced structures to handle the unique demands of deorbiting the International Space Station. The vehicle design will build upon SpaceX's Dragon cargo spacecraft, with an enhanced trunk section that will host propellant tanks, engines, avionics, power generation, and thermal hardware tailored to complete this mission, said Sarah Walker, SpaceX's director of Dragon Mission Management, during a press conference on July 17th. Let's talk about the design of the vehicle. For the propulsion system, the USD orbit vehicle will require about 9,000 kilograms of propellant to execute the controlled deorbit maneuver. This significant amount of fuel ensures the vehicle can maintain the precise trajectory needed to guide the ISS safely towards its designated re-entry zone. One of the benefits of leveraging Dragon's rich flight history is that we can continue to use NASA's certified hardware for a number of the key systems, like the docking system and propulsion system components, Walker said. As for structural enhancements, to withstand the intense heat and pressure during re-entry, the vehicle will be equipped with reinforced thermal shielding. This will protect the critical components of the vehicle as well as the International Space Station structure during the deorbiting process. These modifications will help manage the dynamic loads and thermal conditions encountered during the descent. One of the standout features of the vehicle will be its advanced autonomous control systems. These systems will enable precise maneuvering and real-time adjustments, ensuring the ISS follows the planned trajectory. The vehicle will be equipped with state-of-the-art sensors and navigation tools to monitor and correct its path as needed. Safety is paramount in the design of the deorbit vehicle. It will include multiple redundant systems to handle any potential failures during the deorbiting process. This includes backup propulsion units, redundant navigation controls, and multiple communication links to ensure continuous contact with mission control. The vehicle will be designed to integrate seamlessly with the existing modules of the ISS. This includes docking mechanisms and interface systems that can connect with the International Space Station structure, allowing for a secure and stable deorbiting operation. So here's the plan. Step 1. Docking. The U.S. deorbit vehicle will launch aboard the SpaceX vehicle and rendezvous with the ISS. Using its advanced docking systems, it'll securely attach to the station. Step 2. Preparation for deorbit. Once docked, the U.S. deorbit vehicle will begin preparations for deorbiting, including system checks and propellant loading. Step 3. Deorbit burn. At the designated time, the U.S. deorbit vehicle will initiate a deorbit burn, gradually lowering the ISS's orbit. Step 4. Controlled Descent The vehicle will guide the ISS through a controlled descent, making real-time adjustments to ensure it follows the intended path. And lastly, re-entry and breakup. As the ISS enters the denser layers of the atmosphere, it'll begin to break up. The U.S. deorbiting vehicle will ensure the debris follows a trajectory that minimizes risk to populated areas, directing it towards a remote part of the Pacific Ocean. The ISS is anticipated to progressively return to Earth throughout 12 to 18 months. A speed of around 187 feet per second is required under the contract. 
that's 205 kilometers per hour or somewhat over 127 miles per hour. It'll require a larger dragon, a one-off created particularly for this special mission, to provide that kind of impulse. According to Walker, the trunk portion that houses the propulsion, electricity, and other essential components will be twice as big as the typical freight dragon trunk. This vehicle needs a ton of propellant, a ton of engines to provide a lot of thrust to push the International Space Station, she stated. One of the best places for SpaceX to deorbit the International Space Station modules is the South Pacific Ocean, as suggested in their plan. However, NASA hasn't determined the precise location yet. The majority of the pieces should burn up safely in the Earth's atmosphere, and as of right now, there are no plans to undertake an expensive recovery mission to determine if any remains can be recovered for a museum. While NASA is in charge of the U.S. sector of the International Space Station, each participating space agency is ultimately responsible for its own portion of the orbiting complex. While the developments are still going on, NASA has requested a specialized emergency response study from SpaceX with a contract valued at $266,678. The study is part of NASA's ongoing efforts to enhance the return capabilities of the Dragon spacecraft in various unforeseen circumstances. It aims to develop strategies and solutions that would facilitate the safe return of astronauts to Earth in case of critical situations aboard the International Space Station. This collaboration underscores NASA's commitment to leveraging its commercial partnerships to bolster the safety and operational readiness of its space missions. The study is also designed to evaluate and possibly augment the existing emergency protocols involving SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. This includes examining the feasibility of using additional contingency suits and the Dragon spacecraft's capability to support extra crew members in case of an emergency return. This emergency response study fits seamlessly into the broader context of NASA's collaboration with SpaceX to develop a vehicle capable of deorbiting the International Space Station safely. The detailed design and functionality of this new deorbit vehicle are pivotal for ensuring that the decommissioning of the International Space Station is handled with the utmost precision and safety. What survives re-entry will be heavily influenced by its construction. Although agency estimates indicate that components will range in size from household microwave ovens to standard vehicles. The historic burn is projected to occur around January 2031, when the 11-year solar cycle should be at its lowest point and the Earth's atmosphere should be puffing up as a result of the Sun's activity. While the ISS has been a linchpin for space research, its deorbiting marks a transition to a new era of commercial space stations. NASA plans to continue supporting scientific research and technology development through commercially operated platforms, with the agency acting as an anchor customer. This shift aims to foster innovation and reduce costs, paving the way for more ambitious missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. The deorbiting of the ISS by SpaceX's U.S. deorbit vehicle represents a significant milestone in space exploration. It showcases the advancements in space technology and the importance of international collaboration. NASA's request for an emergency response study from SpaceX, combined with the development of a sophisticated deorbit vehicle, showcases a comprehensive approach to managing the International Space Station's eventual decommissioning. So what do you think of this gigantic vehicle? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update on space exploration. Stay tuned as we witness history in the making with SpaceX and NASA leading the charge into the cosmos. This is the Space Technician signing off for now and I'll see you Space Cowboys in the next one.